A company by the name of Yasuhara reached out to me a couple of weeks ago and asked whether I would be interested in reviewing some of their lenses. They are a company out of Japan, which is near and dear to my heart. This lens is called the Nanoha X5 LU-01 and it is by far the most unique, most bizarre lens I've ever used and tried on my APS-C mirrorless cameras. So let's jump into taking a closer look at what this lens can do. The Yasuhara Nanoha X5 LU-01 is a super macro lens with a magnification of 4x to 5x, which means you can get really, really close to some subjects. It's not a macro, it is a super macro. And in fact, this lens boasts being the world's only microscopic camera lens. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but that's from some material that I read on the internet. Taking a quick tour around the lens, I'll tell you that it feels very sturdy in the hand. It's made out of mostly metal. Now, there are a couple of unique features here. I'm going to start towards the back and then move forward. This lens has a metal mount, no electronic connections because it does not have any sort of autofocus. Towards the very back of this lens, you have your aperture control, which goes from F11 to F32. The ring itself is metal. The action, however, is a little cheap feeling and it sounds... doesn't sound super high-end at all, but it's fine. The middle section of this lens is very simple, just metal, no writing, nothing at all on it. And then as you move further forward, you have a metal focusing ring. You'll see that there are two markings here, 4x to 5x, and that is it. The rotation is about a quarter of a turn, so not very much. And as you focus, if you take a look at the front of the lens, you'll see that that front lens element is moving closer to your subject or further away from your subject to get focus. In front of the focus ring, this is where things get interesting. This is a large plastic attachment that is removable via three Phillips head screws. Now, on this attachment, you have some branding. First time that we see branding on this lens. And then on the other side, there is a mini USB port, which is used to power, that's right, there are three LEDs at the very top of this lens. Now, this attachment, again, is plastic. It is removable, so if you don't wanna use these LED lights, you can remove this whole apparatus and just have a simple macro lens. In fact, here's what the lens looks like with the plastic piece removed. Pretty interesting. The front lens element is tiny, it's very small, looks pretty flat, has some coatings and it reflects a kind of a yellow color. And then you have, again, those three LEDs to the side. The three built-in LEDs have a color temperature of 5500K. You'll also notice there are a couple of slots on the very front of this plastic piece. Those are designed for these target holders. There are four of them that are included. If you have slides or something that you wanna put in here, and then use this lens to take photos of those. On the camera, this lens feels great. It's not overly heavy, even though it is metal construction. It comes in at 360 grams, considering there are 10 elements in seven groups. It's a pretty compact and lightweight lens. Now, normally at this point in the video, I would show you what this lens is capable of by showing you a bunch of samples, to the tune of some chill step. In this case, it might be hard for you to tell what exactly I'm photographing, and that is because this lens is crazy. It's super duper weird. Now, when I took this lens out of the box, I turned on my camera, and I thought it was broken because I was not able to focus on anything. I would put my hand up to it, nothing. First of all, I had to figure out how to get the LED lights to turn on. So for that, you need external power. So I have a little power brick, you use the mini USB connection, plug it in, and there you are. So now you have some light, and the way that you actually use this lens, the way that I've used it, is you put it just flat over your subject, and then you focus it. That's how close you have to be to your subject. In fact, you have to be between 11 millimeters and 19 millimeters to your subject to get something in focus. Here is what our couch looks like. Here is a brush. Here is a cracker. Here's a piece of sugar-covered candy. Here is our door trim. Here is a raisin. Here is a bolt on an electrical outlet. Here is the tip of a ballpoint pen. 
Here is the tip of a thumbtack. Here is a close-up shot of my watch. I can even get one loomed indice to fill the entire frame. Here is a small drop of water. Here is some concrete and then a small ant running around. Here is a close-up of a leaf. Here is a close-up of Janessa's eyeball. I wasn't able to nail focus on this one. Here is a pistachio. Here is an almond. Here is some granite. Here is some skin. Here is some hair. Here are some grains of salt. So I guess that's kind of it for the sample photos, but let's talk about this because this is super crazy, unique. It's a lens unlike any other lens that I've ever used. Now because the focus point on this super macro lens is between 11 millimeters and 19 millimeters, you have to get really, really close to your subject. And you have to be ultra stable with your shot as well because things under that magnification move around quite dramatically. So unless you're using a tripod, even the steadiest of hands will have a hard time nailing focus and keeping a shot stable. That is one of the reasons I really like this front plastic attachment because you can do that and be very close to your subject. Now, when you do that with a normal lens, you're blocking out all of the light and that's the same thing with this lens. So if you are taking a photo of a small piece of salt, for example, and you put the lens over this piece of salt, you're going to have no light whatsoever until you turn on these LED lights and then you can actually take a shot because there's at least some illumination. Now these LED lights are fine. They're not super duper bright. And in fact, if you look at them, I mean, they give you some brightness, but it's not like having three small flashlights on the front of a lens. So don't expect them to light up the night sky by any means. Once you do nail focus with the light on, it is pretty awesome to see the results. Now, I shot a bunch of my samples at f11, I shot them at f32, and just depending on the depth of your subject, even at f32, sometimes it's a little bit too shallow to get everything in focus. In those situations, you may need to use some focus stacking to get a taller subject fully focused. Now, if you have a flat subject such as a coin, that's less of an issue because the shallow depth of field still allows you to nail focus. But if you're taking a picture of a more three-dimensional object such as, let's say, a wasp, uh, you might need to focus stack to get everything, every part of the wasp in focus. And that could be a challenge because you need to have a very obedient wasp that doesn't move as you take multiple shots of it up close within a couple of millimeters of it. So for small insect photography, this is probably not the macro lens for you unless the insects are like dead butterflies in a butterfly collection. Let's talk about some of the negatives with this lens. The first one is what I just mentioned. You have to get very, very close to your subject and unless your subject doesn't move and you don't move, it's pretty hard to get a sharp photo of something. Number two is the build quality is great on this lens, but I do wish that the mechanism on the aperture control was just a little bit more refined. I feel like it cheapens the overall experience of using this lens. The rest of it's fine, uh, even the focus ring. It has a, you know, a little bit of a kind of a tiered stiffness level, um, but it's perfectly usable. The aperture control ring just leaves a little bit more to be desired on an otherwise pretty good lens. Number three, if you're planning on using the front three LEDs on this lens, and in most cases you're going to be using them, you do need, again, external power. So a power bank and a cable. So you need to plug it in like this. And when you do that, you have to carry this around with you. You kind of have to hold it with both hands. So it can get a little bit cumbersome. The last negative is this lens did not come with any sort of front lens cap, unfortunately. So that leaves these LED bulbs and the front lens element and then all of these little nooks and crannies exposed to the elements so you can get dirt and dust and stuff stuck in there. So I would definitely figure out a way to cover this up if you are planning on buying one of these lenses and storing it. But if you can get over those negatives, this is a very fun lens to use. I've just been running around the house taking photographs of random stuff and it's pretty cool to see how much it magnifies. It's like having a microscope attached to your camera, which is 
pretty unique. This thing comes in at $400, $399 to be exact. So it's not the cheapest lens in the world, but as far as I know, it's the only lens out there on the market that does what it does. So there's really nothing to compare it to from a price standpoint. Uh, that is pretty much it for my review. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought of my samples and what you would use a super macro lens such as this one for. As always, thank you so much for all of your likes and your support. Stay tuned for more. I'm very excited to check out the other two lenses that were sent to me. So uh, look out for those videos in the future. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.